Hi from London News in Melbourne. And hi to all the people around the world, wherever you may be watching this. I'd just like you to have a look at a 60 minute program, which was on TV recently here in Victoria, or actually around Australia. It's about alleged corruption in our political parties. The Labour Party, to say precisely, they had branch stacking. You can make your own decision, you'll see what's happening. But the question is, should this government right now be suspended until further notice? Well, they have stood down for the winter. It was very convenient the story came out at the right time. So there's not much the opposition can do to correct things. But it is up to the police. Now, the police, I know for a fact, are not very fond of the Labour Party because they're, they can see the Labour Party as the, the ones that actually describe the Victorian Police Service. Now, I hope the police do something about this. The charges could be seen on reasonable grounds need to be lay, laid against a lot of people. Daniel Andrews wants to be the first politician in Australia to bring in electric cars, autonomous cars. Hence, all this work on the freeways, all the barriers that are up there, supposed to keep us safe. Some of these barriers are in places where there's if the barriers weren't there, you just rode off into, the, into a paddock, slow down, and you'd be safe. But there, no, he wants to be the first one by 2022. It was 2025. We now hope to have autonomous cars in Victoria, and he wants to be one of the first. Now, Daniel, you know, great, good on you, but you're ruining people's lives. And at the moment, you should step down. You should really step down. I mean, Parliament is closed for the winter, so that's very convenient. So by the time it's regains and sets back up again, we'll all have forgotten about it. Well, perhaps we will, perhaps we won't. And a message to the Victoria Police, please investigate this corruption and lay some charges. I know the Labour Party has destroyed the police force here in Victoria. Please don't let them get away with it forever. Come on, guys. You are the meat and the sandwich. They're using you out there in the street. Cops are getting bashed, trying to do their job. And it's not the police fault, it's the attitude of the people. We've all gone left. Our universities are run by lefties. Kids go in there would already have brainwashed and go to university and these professors are all lefties. Destroy them. The whole world has gone left. If you, political correctness has taken over, our lives are destroyed. Anyway, have a look at um, 60 Minutes. I'll wander off and uh, <laughs> put a bit of luck. I may still be here again after this, but I don't intend any any harm to anybody, but I just see a little bit of common sense. And if justice did exist, well, it's pretty hard to find. Good evening and welcome to a special edition of 60 Minutes. I'm Nick McKenzie. Tonight, an explosive year-long investigation by 60 Minutes and The Age newspaper will reinforce the distrust and contempt many Australians have for our politicians. This is a story which exposes one of the Labor Party's faceless men, Adam Somurek. He's a Victorian cabinet minister on Labor's national executive and a factional kingpin who's consumed by the power he's amassed through blatant corruption. Now, normally we'd never know what goes on in the back rooms of Australian politics but we've obtained secret audio and video recordings that catch out the real Adam Somurek. The evidence is unequivocal. You'll be hearing his actual voice. And a warning, Somurek's behaviour is not only bullying and misogynistic, his language is frequently offensive. This anonymous middle-aged man withdrawing cash from an ATM in the suburbs of Melbourne has no idea that for months now he's been watched. His name is Adam Somurek. Most Australians have never heard of him, but he wears several hats. He's Victoria's Minister for Local Government and Small Business. The title he's worked hardest to achieve though, and the one he desperately wants to keep, is most influential man in the Australian Labor Party. Just ask him. I'm the fucking minister. I'm the most powerful man. I'm keeping... 
anyone who's anybody in Australian Labor politics knows the name Adam Somerak. Labor Party politics is brutal, it's vicious, it's unregulated, old school cage wrestling. And when you win the way that Adam's won, first thing that happens is everyone scratches their head and says, who is this guy? And the second thing is, they all come for you. He's going to do something, um, probably a 60 minutes type of thing. Um, but I don't care, it's all right. You're listening to actual audio of Adam Somulak. And as you'll see and hear, he thinks he's so mighty, he'll never be caught. The story at the end of it will be, I'm this powerful guy. That's good for business. But tonight, Adam Somurek's in for a shock as we expose the rotten and corrupt operation this Labor heavyweight runs. We're just going to be really fucking bad. We're going to be assholes and fucking bad and loud. People like uh, Somriak, and I've known a few of them over the years, uh, have uh, one ambition, which is to see themselves as the godfather of politics. This is their life. They relish it, being able to influence and control others. This is politics like you've never seen it before. Adam Somurek's quest for supremacy has now backfired because he's become the target of a year-long covert surveillance operation. 60 Minutes and The Age newspaper have obtained more than 100 audio and video surveillance files. It's undeniable evidence which lays bare the dirty underbelly of the ALP. What we reveal is as audacious as it is wrong. It includes corruption and cash drop-offs. It's just an incredible compilation of, of damning material. Fake ALP members and orders to forge signatures. Commonly carries a heavy jail sentence, not months, years. Taxpayer funded rorting. The guy got a $30,000 fucking pay rise. It's because of a factional thing, and we're in a state of war. And politicians turned into puppets. We're going to take over. I'm going to fucking knock her fucking head off. She's a fucking psycho bitch. By Labor's faceless man. I oh, just framed the joint. It's who I say is going to be the fucking premier. To understand this highly organised operation, you need to understand branch stacking. I grew up in the heyday of the New South Wales Labor Party. Right? I mean, branch stacking was a common practice. It was a common way of winning ALP disputes internally. It was about getting giant ethnic communities to join up on bulk to beat other communities and other candidates. I mean, it, it was framed as some kind of giant ideological conflict between the left and the right. In hindsight, it was always about power. As former Federal Labor Senator Sam Dastiari knows, it's also against party rules. And at its most corrupt, branch stacking involves putting masses of fake members into a political party. The more fake members, the more control you have over the ALP and even who Labor puts into Parliament. This idea behind branch stacking or active recruiting or whatever you want to call it simple, it's about me making sure there are more of my supporters there than your supporters who show up. As you'll see, Adam Somurek is a master in getting people to show up. We're gonna join the Labor Party. In January this year, 100 people gate-crashed a suburban Labor branch meeting in Outer Melbourne. The homeowner and Labor member says he was punched in the face. For Somurek, this is just another day at the office. 
We've reenacted the vision, but you're about to hear actual audio of Somirek boasting about the branch takeover. Our little operation for the Akamanias, as it was, has been very successful. We're about to take over that branch easily. Great. He jokes about the violence directed at the homeowner and Labor member. You're very angry with him. Don't want to bomb his house. On its own, it's shocking. But this is just the start of Somurek's devious grab for political power. They don't know. They're dumb. They're stupid. All these little fuckers. They don't know how fucked they are. Coming up, he became the Frankenstein of factional politics. Dirty deals. And it's just wrong. It's just very wrong. And dodgy politics. You deserve to be punished. I'm just feel so betrayed. How Adam Somurek controls the party. That's a very serious offence which carries a hefty jail to. That's next. Adam Somurek's journey to Labour Party kingpin wasn't simple. A Turkish migrant from humble beginnings, Somurek started out as a taxi driver with ambitions of one day entering Parliament. The idea that a Turkish taxi driver from the outer suburbs of Melbourne can become a cabinet minister is a great Australian story. It's a story that we should actually be proud of. Um, that you can actually participate in a party, you can win support, you can build your base, and you can use that uh, to, to, to propel yourself into parliament. In 2002, his dream came true. Like former Senator Sam Dastiari did with the Rainian voters in New South Wales, Adam Somirek attracted a new group of Labor members in Victoria's Turkish community. Adam is smart, charming, funny, and in the half a dozen interactions I've ever had with him, I can see why people would follow the guy. Now, he's a likeable, charming bloke. But it wasn't long before a less charming side of Adam Somurek came crashing into public view. It is alleged uh, that his personal behaviour was of a threatening, intimidating uh, nature. Accused of standing over his chief of staff, the scandal threatened the stability of the Victorian government. For months, I attempted to cope with the conduct. Premier Daniel Andrews called an investigation by a former judge, and Somurek resigned from the front bench in July 2015. My resignation should not be taken uh, as admission of guilt. I, I maintain my innocence. If history tells us anything about Labor politics, it's that the faceless men of the party don't relinquish power easily and Somirek found his way back to Cabinet. Most people thought that he wouldn't ever be able to make it back after that incident, and to test them to him that he did. Why did Daniel Andrews let him back into Cabinet? Daniel Andrews, I can only assume, made the assessment. It's better to have him inside the tent than outside it. You think Daniel Andrews was scared? Daniel Andrews isn't the kind of guy who gets scared, but he's a guy who thinks tactically. And it will always be more in his interest to have someone like Adam on his side than opposing him. Exactly how Somurek gained his power is only whispered about. Senior figures in federal and state Labor refused to speak publicly about him. But former Prime Minister Kevin Rudd is prepared to say what everyone else in Labor is too scared to. What do you know about the political rise of Adam Somurek? He began, as I understand it, as a factional underling under the control of people in Victoria uh, until uh, he became uh, the Frankenstein of factional politics. And that is having been nurtured in this environment uh, and having been a willing accomplice, he then became the kingpin himself. The key to Adam Somurek's power is brand stacking. He controls two thirds of all Labor members in Victoria. And that gives Somurek huge sway over who gets tapped to run for the ALP and who gets gifted the biggest prize in politics, a safe state or federal seat in parliament.
The first step in Somurek's dodgy operation was finding loyal staffers to help him. Demanding senior ministers of the Andrews government provide taxpayer-funded parliamentary employees to do his dirty work. Again, we've reenacted the vision, but the audio is all real. I said, the MPs, we're meeting now, right? I said, this is what we're going to do. I want everyone to offer up a staff member. I said, you just, you all need to know what the strategy is. The strategy is this. You never see political corruption this blatant. So what you've got to do this time, but what are they holding? But this time, it's caught on camera. These young men are getting paid by taxpayers to work for Labor state government MPs. But what are they really doing on the public dime? Behind the scenes, Adam Somurek calls these parliamentary employees his flying squad. And today, they're up to no good. Um, but the way I see it working now is that you're going to do the grunt work. Um, or you're a flying squad too, to all the yeah, yeah. wherever we're riding next. All right. Meet Jake Cripps and Nathan Croft. They're getting paid by us, the taxpayer, to branch stack for Somurek, helping him take over ALP branches and amass more power in the party. Well, when I say the grunt work, most of the faction sort of secretary at you two. Yeah. yeah. Um, and that's everything goes through you guys. Cripps claims he's been given a job as a parliamentary employee to work in the office of an MP called Chen Q. Yeah, um, I'm starting in Tian's on Mondays. I don't know what takes with Tian and get you here. Croft is also employed by the parliament to work for Minister Robin Scott, who he says has also given him permission to branch stack at public expense. And I spoke to Robin and he said, on his days, and he's pretty chill. Yeah. I gave him the heads up that I was doing some of this stuff, and he's like, have fun. Eager to help, the young men joke about how they're signing up new members of the party. We'll have a string of events, and we'll knock up someone different for a whole bunch of that, and then just recruitment events, so people get wowed. And then a few weeks in, they'll go from not being factional to they understand they're in a yeah. faction, because there's a whole yeah. system set up to turn them into... Yeah. You make them friends, and then you tell yeah, them... Yeah, then you sit there and go... Here you go, oh, there's factions, and this is how this works, and you're in this faction. I wish I could say it. I can't believe it, but it's happened. That's just wrong. It's just very wrong. Why is the practice of using taxpayer-funded staffers to branch stack wrong? Well, it's a criminal offence. If that was proved, there would be a strong case for criminal offences, and multiple criminal offences. I mean... It's a diversion of public money for an ulterior or improper motive, and that's just misconduct in public office, a very serious offence which carries a hefty jail term. Senior barrister Geoffrey Watson SC has seen his fair share of corrupt politicians. He led the inquiry into former New South Wales Labor kingpin Eddie O'Bead in 2012. But the conduct captured of Adam Somurek is unlike anything he's seen before. What does it tell you about Labor Party politics? <sighs> well, what it tells me is things haven't changed since the inquiries that I did in New South Wales about the Labor Party. The investigation was prompted by Labor's use of taxpayer-funded electoral staff for party political campaign work the kicker is that five years ago, Victorian Premier Daniel Andrews' government was busted using parliamentary staff for party business. They promised they'd never do it again. Labor has repaid $388,000. Is there any excuse for the Labor Party, given they were warned? No, none at all. There can't be any excuse for this. It's bad, and it's fundamentally bad. There's no innocent complexion to place on it. The fact that they were placed on notice so recently and told, stop doing this, only aggravates it. Adam Somurek tells parliamentary employees Cripps and Croft how he will make it appear as if they're doing what he calls proper work in the offices of MPs like Tien Q and Minister Robin Scott. But in fact, they'll be working for him, branch stacking. Jake and Nathan, 
They're going to share the role in um, Tiantin. Jack's going to be there three days. Nathan's going to be there two days, but Nathan always also works in the system for Robin, so he'll be doing work in there. Robin won't mind. Kat's probably got him doing other stuff. Um, uh, yeah, she gets me. To do proper work, yeah. Yeah, she actually yeah. do her job. It gets even worse. The recording shows Somirek isn't the only powerful Labor minister exploiting the public purse. Well, I've known Adam Somirek for um, 12 years now. And Cabinet Minister now. Marlene Carews is Somirek's trusted lieutenant. He's also Victoria's Minister for Suburban Development. It's not a real fucking portfolio she's got. She, she says it's not what it means. It's not a real job. But with friends like Somirek, who needs enemies? He says his political ally doesn't do much as a minister. So her taxpayer-funded office helps him to branch deck. It's a very lightweight fucking portfolio. It's just made up portfolio to make it look like we're interested in the suburbs. She admits that. Marlene Kairouz is in fact very busy helping Somirek take over the Labor Party, branch by branch. In this recording, she's directing Labor staffers to find even more fake members to join the party. You guys have come in now where we are in charge. Yeah. We're it. Everyone looks to us now for leadership, like whether it's in the parliament. People come to Adam and I, particularly Adam, like, what? they don't know anything. Yeah. So we are in charge now, and I think, I mean, you guys know that, but yeah. I think you need to... Show that we, we are need to as well. Strut around town. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, don't, don't be arrogant about it. We're just saying we're it. People yeah, no, don't do anything without us. Yeah. But we don't want to treat people disrespectfully yeah, as well. Course, and bring yeah. people, you know, we're very big. But if we can continue to grow, well, yeah. why not? Marlene Caruso's senior policy advisor is this man, Nick McLennan. He's paid over one hundred thousand dollars a year by taxpayers. A job Somirek got him with a 30 grand pay rise in January 2019. But he's actually being paid by the public to branch stack, even if Somirek thinks he isn't great at it. If you get a 30000 $40,000 fucking pay rise, you do quite of the work you do in the electoral office, because that's literally hard work. And you're not doing the factual stuff, because that's what you're meant to be doing. You deserve to be fucking punished. It's my fault. Fucking promoting him after that is just so stupid. I can fucking I just feel so betrayed. Coming up. This is the Somirek master plan. So, Minister, asking somebody to forge signatures? That's just very disturbing. Taking over the suburbs. Real little slimy little is right. To take over the government. The stakes when it comes to winning the Labour Party are incredibly high. That's next. One by one, Adam Somirek has taken over Labor branches all over Victoria. We're just going to go to town. This is fucking war. His latest battlegrounds are the suburbs southeast of Melbourne. But for victory, he needs to amass an army of fake Labor Party members. We've got fucking massive numbers. We've got about 30 going in every week. The stakes when it comes to winning the Labor Party are incredibly high. You're talking about seats in federal parliament, seats in state parliament, who the local mayor's going to be, premiers, prime ministers. The stakes couldn't be higher. And when the stakes are that high, there is always going to be a perverse incentive pushing people to go too far. Former Labor Senator Sam Dastiari says the ALP has had a problem with branch stacking for decades. What does going too far look like? Going too far is that moment where to beat someone in an ALP pre-selection or to beat them at an ALP meeting, you get people to turn up, show up, join up to the Labor Party who don't share your values, who aren't there for the right reasons, and in some cases don't even know they're members of the Labor Party.
one branch Somirek has declared war on is Cranbourne in Outer Melbourne. We are going to have so much fucking fun with these people. I'm going to take Cranbourne branch off them. We're going to bring in all our young Labor people that we've just got. Real little fucking slimy little fuckers, right? Real passive-aggressive fucking gay kids, right? It's just sort of doing what they do. But patronising, annoying and just marshalling people and making sure the paperwork's right. Somurek's master plan is to take over Cranbourne so he can replace sitting Labor MP Pauline Richards with one of his cronies. Possibly this man, Manoj Kumar, who is branch stacking for him as well. Yeah, just put them all to Cranbourne. Yeah, you can take that branch. Yeah. I mean, uh, this would be, uh, our numbers would be okay for put Pauline out or not? What's that? We're just, we're just going to make sure something happens. Somurek is not used to losing, and the secret tapes reveal how furious he is that his political rivals are attempting their own branched acts, using what he calls Anglos. Maybe we do just have a big fucking stack of arms. That's all they're doing, stacking Anglos. Anglos just fuck off after a while. To take on the Anglos, Somurek enlists the Indian community to help. The Indians are fucking, we can put a thousand in. They're all fucking fully resourced. Oh, no, they know the Indians can turn up. Parliamentary employees like Sipal Patel help deliver the Indians for Somurek. Now I work in Adam's office in the city. Once in a month I meet my people, so I can do coordination with them. So once I go, I ask them to sign it, four or five people, another day four or five people, another day four or five people. That's done. Then back, what do you call, card number and everything. Then all. On the video, Patel admits he's using fake addresses to get new members for Somurek. I can get my friend's address, take these people who is in Kran, but right now, ask them to join in the Springwell branch and they give the address of uh, the Springwell somewhere and after that, uh, once they throw in the Springwell meeting, you can ask them to transfer. Using fake members is not only banned under Labor Party rules, it may also involve misconduct in public office. What you're about to see is vision showing Somurek directing a Turkish businessman to forge signatures of branch members. The confused businessman asks how he's meant to sign other people's signatures. Somurek is insistent. He tells him to forge the signatures of his relatives. One more time, Somurek tries to get the businessman to do the wrong thing and sign other people's signatures. But after a while, he appears to give up. That's just very disturbing. An attempt to have somebody forge signatures. I mean, that's just as bad as forging them yourself. It seems like the businessman didn't go on to sign, but that doesn't matter. If you attempt to solicit it, a forgery, that's just as bad as committing a forgery. It's really very disturbing. Sydney Silk Geoffrey Watson SC says Somurek's conduct not only breaches ALP rules, it may also be criminal. How seriously does the criminal law look at the forgery or attempted forgery of other people's signatures? Commonly carries a heavy jail sentence. Uh, years. 
not months, years. And if there's multiple attempts at it, more so. It's very serious. Would this be looked at as powerful evidence by, say, a court? Oh, yes. It's just so bad. It's a minister asking somebody to forge signatures. It's really awful. What sort of a man do you see in the audio recordings and the video recordings? One who shouldn't be in Parliament. You just cannot have people who sit in Parliament one day and pass a law and they go out in their private life and break that same law. You can't have that. It undermines any confidence that we can have in our politicians. It's just very wrong. Coming up... That's good for business, right? Following the trail of cash. So I've packaged it up, given him the dough. That's the living, breathing definition of corruption. How this ruthless politician... Well, if he gets caught on the street, he'd not say to do f*** on the stuff. ...pays for his power. Good morning, Adam. I'd like to ask you some questions about brand stacking. That's next. For years, Victorian Government Minister Adam Somurek was an all-powerful, faceless man of the ALP. Until tonight, he was confident his dirty dealings would never be exposed. These secret audio recordings show he's not even concerned by this 60-minute story. At the, end, the story at the end of it will be, I'm this powerful guy. That's good for business, right? They all gravitate towards us. They're not going to get any brand-stacking stuff. I don't care. I'm really relaxed. I mean, it's good for business. He's also relaxed because he believes he'll have the backing of Premier Daniel Andrews no matter what. Next day, Daniel will be out, the last Daniel. So, Daniel, I'm sorry, it's a good minister. And that's it. Fucking deal. Just all he has to do is make sure I'm settled and he's got a happy life. Somurek controls two-thirds of the Victorian Labor Party, so there's a good reason to keep him happy. But this immense power comes at a cost. I'm trying not to make sense I'm going to get the payments stuff, no one. All they know is money appears and they've got to take them if they go down on us. When does Brand Stacking move from OK to immoral or even illegal? It's when people are being blindsided being conned, being tricked, fooled into joining a political party, and it corrupts the whole process for everybody. Why does it corrupt the process? It corrupts the process when those rules aren't being followed, where people who don't live where they claim to live are fraudulently being put in, when people from ethnic communities who aren't even aware that they've joined a political party are being used to push people out, that's when it crosses the line. Sam Dastiari used to be a star of the Labor Party. He knew how to play politics hard. But even he says when it came to attracting new members, there was always a clear line that shouldn't be crossed. Paying for other people's membership is a horrible, dirty tactic. It's also a fool's game. It always ends badly. You say paying for other people's membership is a dirty game. Why dirty? Paying for membership can often only be a few steps away from having people who don't know their members of the Labor Party join. That's why the Labor Party is so strict in its rules when it comes to these matters. In most cases, Somurek pays for members through men like this. Businessman Ramazan Gunesh. Pressured to forge signatures. Young Paul and Hipson Kush there. I'm up for someone. Somurek says Ramazan also comes up with the cash for Turkish members. Ramazan will play for the Turks, the ones he's put in. Somurek claims he can also rely on wealthy Indian brothers Alok and Akash Kumar to pay for new Indian members. The good thing about Indians is they pay for, you know, people pay for them. But, um, I'd rather not be exposed too much with the Indians. But on the audio tapes, Somurek is rightly worried. He knows paying for another's membership 
clearly breaks AOP rules. No, it's no B, I'm just going to suck with you, mate. But no, I want to give it to you directly. In his blind quest for power and control, though, Somirek makes a key error. Rather than relying on middlemen to do the dirty work, he begins paying for fake members himself, leaving him completely exposed. We're following Somirek's money trail by tracing a recent branch stack. Earlier this year, dozens of new ALP members suddenly appeared. We're on our way to ask them who really paid for their membership, and if they even know if they've become a member. Are you a real member of the I, Labor Party? I don't really not real because I just put a friction in there. Who paid for you? Who paid, paid for me? Yeah. I paid for myself. Some appear to have been forewarned of what to say if someone comes knocking. You told me you, they gave you a receipt. Sorry, I'm a bit busy, mate. That's not true, is it? They did not give you a receipt? It's, it's true. Yeah, Are you? yeah. It's okay. True. Thank you for your time. Others are furious to be caught out. I don't want to talk to me. Get the hell out of my house. Yeah. Get the hell out of my house right now. I don't need to get angry. Uh, I'm sir, angry excuse now. me, sir. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Get the fuck out of my house. I'm sorry. Now. But some are willing to admit that someone else paid for their membership. And your friend paid for you? Uh, he, he paid for me, but I said I'd pay him later. You said pay him back. Yeah. Did you pay him back? Uh, not yet. Maybe you didn't know that you have to pay for your own. No, she yeah. didn't know. She most have only ever been to one branch meeting, and none could name their local Labor member, or even the Premier. What's the name of the Labor leader in Victoria? Uh, what was his name? I'm a bit sleepy, mate. You can't remember the name of the Labor uh, leader in Victoria. Do you know who your local Labor Party member is? Uh, local here? Yeah. This one, I, I, I don't know yet. Yeah. You don't know who I, your local I, Labor Party I member is? I go to a meeting one time, but I can see the man. So, who really paid? I'll give money. In the case, I'll give it to him tomorrow. He can come tomorrow, and I'll better take money tonight to take another money tomorrow. In this secret recording, Son Murek is organising a cash drop-off at a suburban shopping centre in south-east Melbourne. So that's what we'll do. I'll get Nick to pick up from me tomorrow morning and then um, Thursday, and then tomorrow he'd come, package it up and, um, and take it in. Dressed casually, he withdraws a stack of cash from the ATM using two bank cards. He then walks back to his car. Soon he is joined by Nick McLennan, the senior policy advisor Somurek uses to branch stack for him. Inside the blue folder is $2,000 in cash and 34 new membership forms, fake members that can help Somurek take over Labor branches. How does this evidence strike you? I've been part of many inquiries. I still find this really very disturbing. This is money passing hands now for a totally in, improper purpose. And there's a real genuine personal benefit to doing all of this. You stack branches, you get power, you control a faction. It's just terrible. Uh, it's really, actually, I find that upsetting. Director of the Centre of Public Integrity, Geoffrey Watson SC, isn't easily upset. He's made a career out of shining light into dark places of power. I've never seen anything, nothing, approaching this. The fact is that corruption normally occurs in the dark. You find out about it. Years later, if you ever find out about it, you don't catch people in the act. It's incredible. You use the word corruption, that's a big word. Yeah. Why is that a fitting word? The gentleman is a minister. That's one of the most trusted characters in our democratic system. You've got to be able to trust them because they wield so much power. 
if that power is misused, and if it's misused especially for an ulterior motive or for personal benefit, then that's the living, breathing definition of corruption. But it wasn't the first time these two men have exchanged cash for members in a suburban car park. On April 14, Adam Somurek arrived at the same shopping centre car park to hand over money. I've packaged uh, I've given him the funds. Packaged up. This is a recording of Somurek describing the cash drop-off. The bag man was, again, Nick McLennan. Well, if he gets caught on the street, he'd not say to do some of this stuff. The cash totaled thirteen hundred dollars. So I've packaged it up, given him the dough, just the extra, just so that for, to take care of money orders and take care of our express post. He might have cut corners. He shouldn't because he's got plenty. Uh, Two six fifty in each envelope. Somurex money pays for fake members, and by controlling hundreds of them, Somurex can control who gets a seat in Parliament. This also allows him to promise his branch stacking lieutenants, those doing his dirty work, their own safe seats. I'm looking after people, I'm going to promise people stuff, you know. I've got, I don't want to promise people stuff. We repeatedly asked Adam Somurek for an interview, and he repeatedly refused. Morning, Adam. Sorry to bother you this morning. I'd like to ask you some questions about branch stacking. Why is it that's, why is it that so many of your enemies say that you're involved in branch stacking? We're going to uh, Parliament. Why don't you just meet me in Parliament? Can you? Could you tell I'm me? I'm actually going to involved? Parliament right now. I refuse to speak to you outside my house. Let's just speak in Parliament. Why don't, why don't I'm happy you, to talk to you in Parliament. Well, I've asked for interviews. You've, you've no, said I'm not no, running one, away. One question, Adam. I'm not running away. One Parliament. question: Are you involved in branch stacking? I'm going to Parliament, and this is my house. One question: this Are you house, involved in branch stacking? Yes or no? I'll speak to you in Parliament. Have I'm you ever paid? My house. Have you ever paid for somebody else's membership I'm not going in the ALP? Yes or no? Adam? My house. I'll have to talk to you outside Parliament. All right. Let's easy, just go easy there question. Now. No. What's it going to say now. that you are branch stacking across Victoria? Is this correct? Let's go to Parliament. I'm going to Parliament right now. You know where Parliament is. Let's meet there and let's let's have a chat. There. It's really yeah, simple, really simple have question. Have terrifying. you ever paid for somebody else's membership in the ARP? No, but I will have a That's chat. That's a no. That's a no. Are you sure? Yes. Coming up. She's a stupid, stupid mob. Losing the women's vote. Let the f***ing bitch Gabriel out. I hate her guts. But who cares? They're dumb. They're stupid. And not even the leader can escape. Fuck the brute. Somurex arrogance. Who I say is going to be the f***ing premier. He should be booted out. That's next. The Gillard camp had branded Mr Rudd a disloyal psychopath who ran a paralysed and chaotic government. Most Australians remember the tears when Kevin Rudd was rolled as Prime Minister. Rudd has always blamed the faceless men of the party the branch stackers and factional warlords for killing his political career and acting like a cancer on our democracy. If we believe that politics should be about ideas, ideals, and also policies to change Australia for the better, then anything which happens in a darkened room and in secret to simply organise power for its own sake in my view, has no place uh, in any mainstream political party. And I regard it as a corruption of the political process, whether it's in the Liberal Party or the Labor Party. The fact that one man, Adam Somurek, is arguably more powerful now than the faceless men who rolled you, does that concern you? The faceless men uh, were powerful enough 10 years ago to remove a democratically elected Prime Minister of the country. If we now have a faceless man with even more power, then he has to be rooted out. Otherwise, uh, it is fundamentally destabilising for our parties and our country's future. 
It's hard to believe the faceless men of the Labour Party still wield so much power. But seeing is believing. And Adam Somurek is living proof they can, as long as they control enough Labour members via branch stacking. Why doesn't Anthony Albanese or Premier Daniel Andrews take Adam Somurek on? If he's such a cancer, if he's such a Frankenstein. Capable and competent political leaders like Albo, like Daniel Andrews, have been doing the right thing in pushing back hard against this. Uh, but let's uh, face a few realities. Uh, dealing with um, uh, the Somurek forces uh, is uh, not for the faint-hearted. I will say that I'm going to kill people. The secret video and audio tapes reveal just how Somurek has earned his power in the party. But how does he wield it? As you're about to see, Somurek believes he has limitless influence over federal and state politicians including rising federal Labor star, Tim Watts. Tim Watts is not bowing to me. I don't know what they say, I don't know that, but... Federal opposition whip, Joanne Ryan, is another Somurek boasts he toys with. I should always take out of that event. Oh, we're fucking recruiting 13 a month, and he always taking over Hoppers Crossing brands, so we'll be recruiting 26 a month in that seat. So yeah, she's not happy. Then there are those in the federal parliament that Somurek shields, like Deputy Chair of the Intelligence and Security Committee, Labor MP, Anthony Byrne. Yeah, this is the actual audio of Somurek, but we've reenacted the vision. Anthony's got a terrible reputation. Everyone thinks he's a waste of space. I don't. I'm protecting. I have to stop articles talking about Anthony Byrne being going. Right? I say he's got more protection he's going nowhere. And there are those Somurek is working to remove, not via democratic means at the ballot box, but by sheer behind the scenes power. I did call in Robert Mitchell and told him that he's, he's, he needs to think about his future. He's just going, oh, still power. I said, no, man, it's about fairness, it's about the stability of the right. Another on his hit list is left faction federal MP Julian Hill. Yeah, I'm looking forward to this, actually. In between second councils and stuff, I'll be second. Everywhere we go, we've got to say, well, what you did was an act of fucking war. You just dropped a bomb on us. Uh, and we're going to get a nuclear. In the Victorian Parliament too, Somurek has marked MPs for career execution. And on his hit list is anyone who stands in his way. Yeah, no, fuck them. They're going to die. The new generation of leaders are going to be taught a lesson. Victoria's Minister for Women and the Prevention of Family Violence, Gabrielle Williams, is one of those who Somurek is planning to politically finish. Take the fucking bitch Gabrielle out. I hate her guts. I was parliament last week saying that it was trying to mock off Daniel Andrews. I got no idea. When Daniel's going to go soon, she's just so fucked. No, 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 they're dumb, they're stupid. All these little fuckers, like Gabriel and all, they don't know how fucked they are. Fourth out of the mystery, that fucking stupid bitch. Andrews goes, she's a stupid, stupid mob. If he can end a political career, he can also start one. Somurek has been cutting deals with people who control Labor branches. The deal is simple. If they hand over their branch-dacked members to Somurek, he promises them a seat in Parliament. The beauty of the plan is he now owns them. Hey. Hey. When MP Hong Lim stood down in 2018, Somurek gave his ally Meng Hyang Tak his seat. Whereas Hong used to be this fucking whinging to his hands not like that. It's like, I got you in, you got to do as I say. And so I ran him out and said, what's going on? He said, he's saying, I said, no, 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 no. I said, you've only got how many votes? Delegates. It's 19 delegates. We support you for press selection and you hand your votes over. Hang from now on. This is a recording of Somrek actually calling Heng and directing him to stack a local AOP branch. 
from now on, every month, we're going to call 13 people, put 13 people through the branches in Bruce. Okay? We have to do this. We're all in this together. Okay? We're in a war. Somirek makes it clear that with his extraordinary power, he can issue orders with impunity. Not even Anthony Albanese's power in the party is a roadblock. I'm having discussions with people that are close to Elmo. He's going to protect Elmo. Somirek ultimately believes it is he, and not the people of Victoria or the Labour Party, who should decide who leads the state if Daniel Andrews steps down. Right, because they think I've got the premier. Fuck the premier. Right? That's what this is about. Fuck the premier. I always find the joy. Like, it's who I say is going to be the fucking premier. If Adam Somurek's involved in cash drop-offs in car parks, encouraging people to forge signatures, industrial-scale brand stacking, what should Anthony Albanese and Daniel Andrews do about it? If these things are proven in the case of Somurek, uh, then there's no place for Somurek in the Australian Labor Party. None whatsoever. Uh, he should be booted out. Very simple. And if they've um, fallen foul of the law, throw the book at them. And that's our program for tonight. Thank you for watching. We'll be back next week with another edition of 60 Minutes. I'm Nick McKenzie. Good night. The Victorian government has backflipped on plans to ease coronavirus restrictions after a... Thank you for watching 60 Minutes and that little bit of news where the, this government, which is under such a cloud, can actually make us the statement about free shutting businesses when there's personally I don't know anybody who's even got a common cause. I mean, have a look at a little clip here from the days of Henry the Eighth when the sleeping sickness hit hit in the in the fifteenth century and they all panicked. They had separation, believe it or not, they all wore scarfs like masks. And of course it all disappeared again because people built up an immune system. So it's just another form of influenza then. And just the same again. And if you know somebody with a common cold, and they'll get better. Anyway, Dr. Barry signed off in Melbourne. Thanks for watching, and I hope I haven't offended too many people. Bye for now. Oh, what is that stick? It's vinegar. Vinegar, excellence. What's happened to your majesty? There's been an outbreak of sweating sickness in the city. 300 deaths this day alone. Fetch Dr. Lenica quickly. What about my wife, the queen? What about the queen? Ah, don't be afraid, I'll see you soon. George, take your sister to her chambers. Oh, hi.